Sorry, we can't get your audio. <laughs> I didn't know that was muted, guys. So you, some more examples on polynomials. One, given that x minus one and x plus one are factors of, of px per three plus qx squared minus three x minus seven. Find the value of P and Q. So to be a factor is to go in the function and give a zero as a remainder. That means for X minus one to be a factor, when we get it and equate to zero, so for x, this value of x must give us zero. We'll have this as equation one. x plus one will be equated to zero, give us negative one. This value should be equal to zero, so that we have equation two. So what will happen will be, we'll solve equation one and equation two simultaneously to get the values of p and q. So equation one is telling us that P one power three plus Q one squared minus three one minus seven is actually zero. Equation two is telling us that P negative one three plus Q negative one squared minus three negative one minus seven is actually zero. This implies P plus Q is equal to 10. The other one, negative P plus Q is equal to four. Then solve simultaneously. So or I can say if P is equal to 10 minus Q, then in equation two, we have negative 10 minus Q plus Q is equal to four. So that we get negative 10 plus Q plus Q is equal to four, telling us that two Q is equal to four minus, I mean, four plus 10, which is equal to two Q is equal to 14. Divide by two. So you are too fast. Q is equal oh, to so seven. You are just too fast, Papa. Oh. So you are too fast. Okay. I will just the speed. <laughs> what was making me fast was wanting you to talk. Second is that I was adding small, small numbers. Now that you have talked, you can go back. <coughs> Simultaneous equations, since we have two of them, by substitution, if we solve for one variable here, we pick to P, take Q the other side, so we'll have P is equal to 10 minus Q. So that in this equation, where there is P, we'll substitute, that so that we have negative 10 minus q plus so p is equal to q plus q is equal to 4 and then we expand so it will be negative 10 plus q plus q if you add the q q here you get 2q this negative 10 you take it the other side it will go as a positive one so when you add there, you get 14, then divide by two, you get seven as Q. So what is going to be P? P is going to be 10 minus seven, which is known 
to be two so that we get three. Or would have just said, since we have P plus Q is equal to 10, and also negative P plus Q is equal to four. Simultaneous, if we add, we'll get P minus P plus minus Q. I mean, P plus minus P, zero. Q plus Q, two Q. 10 plus four, 14. Divide by two, divide by two. Q would still come out to be seven. And then choose any of these equations. If you choose the first one, you would say P plus seven is equal to 10, so that P becomes 10 minus seven, which is three. So therefore, P is three as Q is seven. Our solution. Another one. Two. The expression two x power three minus a x squared plus b x plus three. It gives a remainder negative 15 when divided by x plus 1 and a remainder. And a remainder negative forty six when divided by x minus three. Find a and b. If you want math to be easy. Just follow its language. This is language. Just understand the language. That's all. When they say a remainder, negative 15, they mean if you get x plus 1, you get it to 0 and so for x would get negative 1. If you take this number negative 1 in this polynomial, we must get, if we take this negative one there, we must get the remainder negative 15. And you come back, you get x minus three, you get it to zero and solve for x. If you get that three, substitute in the function a three squared plus b three plus three, you must get negative 46. Then solve for a and b, okay? So the worry will be, why would I take the power on the right? Because now we don't have any x, and no variable is squared or to any power apart from one, meaning, we just have a, a clear simultaneous linear equation. That is, the first one will give us negative one by three is negative one. Then negative one by two, we get negative two. There we still maintain negative A because negative one squared will give us one. And then minus B plus three is equal to negative 15. So we get negative A minus b is equal to negative 15. I'm now taking negative two plus three, we get one. 
we take the other side, it will go as a negative one, giving us negative A minus B is equal to negative 16. We get this one also. We get this one also. We have two, three cube, that is eight. Eight by two, 16 minus nine A plus three B plus three is equal to negative 46. Simplify nine A plus three B is equal to, this is 46, not 146. This is negative 46. So it's equal to negative 46. Then 16 plus three, we get 19. Take the other side, it will go as a negative, as a negative 19. Sir. Hello? Sir. There it's on not the supposed first to be equation. 27. 27 times 2 on, on Chan. On 3 to the power 3. It's, a, it's supposed to be 54. <laughs> 27 times 27 <laughs> times 2. It's supposed to be 52. I don't know if it's 54, 52 somewhere. There. 54. So that. Here we have 54 plus three, we get 57. So we have minus 57. So on that first equation, isn't it supposed to be negative 15 minus two? Negative 15 minus two. Ah, here we have this three here. Oh, we get it from here. This three here and the negative two. So if you add this, it will be like three minus two, giving us one. And then take it the other side. Is it okay? Okay, it's okay. Okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so now. We have, we haven't found what this number is. What number is this? Negative one zero three. Negative one zero three. Okay, so we have a negative A minus B is negative 16. Negative nine A plus three B is equal to negative one zero three. If you divide by three, three can't go in one zero three. It can go and leave a remainder, is it? Yeah, leave the remainder. So we use substitution. So negative A is equal to negative 16 plus B. Or if we divide by negative, divide by negative, so that there's less confusion, A should be equal to 16 minus B. So we come here and say, <laughs> numbers are bad. 16 minus B plus three B is equal to negative one zero three. Expand, what is nine times 16? Come on, come on, come on. What's nine multiplied uh, by sixteen? Nine times sixteen. 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 What is B? So we have 12 B is equal to 144 minus 103. Get 41. 
divide by 12, divide by 12. So B is equal to 41 over 12. This is B. Then A will be 16 minus 41 over 12. I uh, need to find 12 down. What is 16 by 12? <laughs> 192. <laughs> 192 <laughs> minus 41, giving us 192. Okay. So this one I want to ask you now. I also know 192 minus 41 is 151. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> so you have found the values of A and B in that order. There are no other methods which can work apart from uh, that method. But what about the What about it? Multiplication method. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Someone is not taking his cutting hand. I can't get what they are saying. That's a signal someone is talking. Okay, so if you're able to sketch, you're able to solve such questions, and uh, then you're done. What else we really need in this one? Nothing. Bring questions, sir. Eh? So what I'm saying is that if you can solve these two questions, you can also sketch. You can do the synthetic and the long division. Then what does it mean in polynomials? Nothing. You can solve in polynomials. And go Sir, to are you soon. able to give another example on sketching? On sketching? Yes. yes. Yeah, maybe. Let me give. Let me give another example on sketching. This is example one, two. Example three. Show that example three A show that X minus two is a factor of PX is equal to X three plus X squared minus 5x minus 2b factorize px completely c solve px is equal to zero hence Sketch. Yeah. It's like you have now provoked my, my mathematical analysis. So have you seen how the, it has come? This is how equations appear in the, in the test. Now that there's no more test on polynomials in the exam. <clears throat> Except that they may skip those B, C, or just combine 
and ask you to sketch. So I've given you the procedure now on how we do the sketching through this question. A, to show we get x minus two is equal to zero, solve and get these two, substitute it in P and see what we get. Meaning we get eight plus four minus 10 minus two, giving us 12 minus 12, which is equal to zero. So you say, since P of two is equal to zero, X minus two is a factor of P of X. That's how you show. If it, now when they say show, it can never fail. In mathematics, we don't go around as if they are trying to negotiate for the price of something. Uh -uh. If it is show, it works. Prove that it doesn't, it doesn't. You can't say no, they just said show, but it failed. So I told them that it can't, no, no, no. Not in mathematics. B, solve Px is equal to zero. You get Px is equal to zero, meaning you equate x3 plus x squared minus 5x minus two is equal to zero. Now the best way of solving this, ah no, it skipped. B says factorize. So we need to factorize Px. Now we already have x is equal to two is a fact. So by synthetic, we get that two, get the coefficients so one, one, negative five, negative two. Drop the one, multiply, get three, multiply, get six, add, get two, get a zero. So Px can be written as x minus two, <clears throat> the same x minus two, and then x squared plus three x plus one. What next? Sketch. No. So look, this guy here, Steve. this guy here cannot be factorized nicely. It doesn't have factors. So they factorize completely. We'll just be left just here. No, you, you, you insist to factorize it completely if this guy here is nicely factorizable. Now it's not nicely factorizable, it requires the formula. So we leave it like that. Then we go to C and equate this guy to zero. But we have it in this form. Is equal to zero. So X is two or X is negative three plus or minus the root of three squared minus four, one, one over two, giving us negative three plus root five over two or negative three minus root five over two. So that when they say sketch D, D can even finish here because we've already found points. The only thing we'll add is, we'll just add the, the y intercept, which is P of zero, which is negative two. So it's passing at negative two and negative three plus root five over two. This is a negative number. So we have it as a negative number here. 
you get to three plus root five over two. Another negative number is here. Uh, negative three minus root five over two. Then two is here. So you can see that the gap between this here and this one, the right one is bigger than the one on the left. So our sketch, if you try to make it go like this, you notice that you have nowhere to turn from. <laughs> you keep going. So you don't do that. So we come back and take it in which form? Take it in this form. Come down, pass here, turn somewhere here, and go out. That's how you sketch. So, sir, uh, the highest degree tells you the number of roots you have. Yes. Unless they have repeated roots. Sir, so we cannot use synthetic division for the factors. It's the easiest. Uh, uh, sir, the y intercept was negative two, right? Yes. Okay, then why is it on the positive side? Why do you mean on the positive side? Oh no, I to get like oh oh okay okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like I'll solve it on my own here, so I got a bit right. puzzled. It's fine. All right. All right. Other people are so smoke, <laughs> but don't do smoke. It's too far for us. For us, Pira, Pira, Stiti, get. It's so hard to do anger. Okay, now listen. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm a bit lost on graphing this stuff, sketching rather. Let's mm -hmm. repeat. Yeah. On I'm the lost. sketch, what is important is if you are not lost up to here, then we are together. You pick this number no. two. Yeah. Place it here. This number here. Place it there. This guy. Place it there. Then, when you are done placing this, you don't know the orientation of the graph. What will give you the orientation of the graph is the intercept. If it comes down, you understand that your graph can only come this way. If it was up, mm -hmm. it would have gone this way. Now, when it is down and you try going this way, you saw I just went there. I didn't know where to turn from. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. This is where functions end. And in the next class, we'll be doing by now. Uh, sir. Yes. I just want to clarify on the, the previous, the one we were doing. Uh, the, with the remainders, the one where which we are looking at, uh, on P, oh, yeah. the one which we are doing, is, yeah, those ones. I want to just to check the answers. So, guys, please don't miss class. If you miss class, follow up the video, watch it. Though. <laughs> Uh, I will not be posting some videos on YouTube because he, some people are enjoying those videos. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe the, I don't know. It was look, the hard part is that you find this guy is watching, he's not even subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. You want money? Uh, sorry, reverse, reverse the screen. 
At least if you are not subscribed, eh? then you should have paid. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. So it's not good. I need to reach my target. I'll be reaching soon. Just a few number of subscribers there. Then the hours are work on the hours. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Uh, as we, sub, we, we subscribe, sir. We're subscribed, sir. Mm. <laughs> so I'll post. Uh, all right, so. So we end here. The next class will be doing binomial. So binomial only do it in two sessions, it will be done. Okay. Because we'll just do the two important sessions. things. Yeah, two sessions, meaning for us. <laughs> It's very, very Two nice. sessions. Two sessions. Even the Yes. <laughs> we just but go for the Yeah, it's not even hard. We just go for the important things. And then we'll be Are you talking today. about binomial? Yes. Evening <laughs> <laughs> and evening, sir. Mm, don't worry. Uh, okay, so we end here, guys. All right, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Alright. Mm.